Ten days of photographing landscapes and wildlife in Greenland, possibly polar bears, muskoxes, the Red Mountain, gigantic icebergs. Our friend Daniel Bergman was on the phone, offering us to join an upcoming tour with a small expedition ship to Scorisby Sound in East Greenland. Saying no was not an option. There was something surreal about life on board. Those who travel the world this way are probably used to this, but we weren't. Having a nice cabin, going for breakfast, lunch and dinner every day and having the same service as in a hotel was terrific. We on a group came here on a Zodiac. We're waiting for the light. Waiting for the light <laughs> to hit the peaks. Of course, it's different being with a large group of photographers, but it's, uh, it's been okay. no problem. I thought it would be much more challenging. I know. Difficult, but now everybody is so. Everyone's so relaxed. Yeah. I guess the Red Mountains in Greenland are called Red Mountains for a good reason. Yeah, stop by something. I'm just taking handheld. It's the best thing to frame in. We are now at the Red Mountains in Greenland, and uh, I find it uh, like a buffet of foregrounds to be here. It's like you have this colorful ground with all kinds of plants frozen today. Frozen lakes and frozen lake. All these beautiful mountains and this one mountain was red a few minutes ago. Yeah it's amazing how how it was dark then as soon as the sun came up. It changed gra colors. gradually became red. Yeah, like my jacket. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. And uh, then when the sun was all the way up, it's uh, down to more dull colors. Yeah. This morning we were at the uh, sunrise here at the uh, Red Mountains, as we call them. And uh, it's fantastic to have this color. It's, it's amazing red color they have. But the first day we are here, we have been here once before. The sun was behind the mountains. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, I remember and, that. Uh, was nice. Then the challenge was the contrast. There was a huge contrast in the photos because you had the sun like this into your face and uh, the mountain also, but finding a foreground, mm -hmm. finding a pond or something. I found my favorite shot from that day was. Uh, uh, when I used the uh, F-18 
to have a sun star mm -hmm. in the middle of the mountain. Yeah. And a decent foreground. Yeah, it was lovely. Daniel Bergman was one of the guides on the ship. When we began our journey as photographers almost 20 years ago, he was our role model. He's a pioneer when it comes to bird and wildlife photography. So I, I started photographing nature in Iceland 25 years ago or so. And as many struggling nature photographers at the time, I then found a living through guiding others and mostly hobby photographers, amateur photographers that come to Iceland and are in need of guidance. I've been doing this now for 20 years, mostly in my home country, but have extended it to the Arctic, going to Greenland and going to Svalbard. And it just gives me great pleasure, not only showing people my country and my nature, which I'm very proud of, but also sharing my knowledge and what I've uh, learned along the way. iceberg photography has been uh, from zodiacs and uh, also actually from the ship. It's amazing how easy it is and uh, how comfortable it is to be aboard a ship like Polar Pioneer. Mm. Uh, <laughs> it's so strange. We have our, our cabin yeah. and uh, just open the door, take maybe five steps, bang, you have a big iceberg in front of you. Yeah, <laughs> it's unreal. Our cabin is in a really good spot in, yeah. in the ship. <laughs> but most of them are. Yeah, most of them are. Yeah. yeah.
Fortunately, we had for the first days we had cloudy conditions. Yeah. Soft box, it was awesome. It was like a soft box, drawing out the blue color in the, in, the, in the icebergs. I think some of the icebergs. It's difficult to describe how big they are. You don't yeah. have any scale. But we saw the sea when we went on the zodiacs in the land. Looking back, we saw the sea. It was a tiny, tiny sea. But the ship is 71 meters long, yeah. but it was tiny. It was like a little rowing Behind boat. Behind the yeah, glacier. Yeah, some of the icebergs must be about three or four stories high. Sometimes you think they are really close to the ship and you want to drone to them. And you put your drone up and send it straight to the icebergs. And, and it could be five kilometers. Good thing with Zodiacs is uh, you can get a very low viewpoint. You can put your camera down, you can lay down on the Zodiac. Yeah. And, uh, and they are really flexible in the Zodiacs. If yeah. you want to stop, take a picture of something, they just stop. And go around the icebergs and everything. So yeah. they and take the, time. Yeah, they wait. If you have ripples in the, in the sea, you they wait. Yeah. Until, until the ripples are gone, yeah. kill the motor, yeah. and uh, sometimes you can get a great reflection. Yeah. Hello. Hi guys. Ah, you got it. <laughs> are you ready to rain? great sun coming through some of the icebergs. It was amazing to see how F14, F16, F18 was creating this sun star. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful sun yeah. star. What I found challenging is the speed uh, and I did not expect to be using wide-angle lens like 14-24 this much mm -hmm. because, well, they don't get really, they don't go dangerously close to the icebergs because, because they can calm, they can turn themselves and uh, make waves. Some of them, they, 
they can go close to. They they know yeah, the little, where. little ones. Yeah. And if they're stuck some, somehow. The little one Swarovski. Like Swarovski. Yeah, it's a, yeah, they can get close to the tiny ones. I started going on these trips in 2013 and this is uh, the eighth trip that I make into uh, Scorisby Sound System in Greenland. Uh, my reason for going there is the incredible landscape, the ice, the um, variety of ice, the ever-changing landscape of ice because no matter how many times you go it's never going to be the same. The ice is ever changing, different types of icebergs, they're in different locations. Um, and that is uh, my main fascination with this landscape. It's how ever changing it is. It is the dynamic of the ice versus the land. I want to be this six six. Second day of the expedition, we yeah. saw some polar bears. Oh yeah. They were amazing seeing them, yeah. two of them together. Totally there were seven polar bears yeah. in the area. Polar bears in this area are skittish. They are hunted. Using our 400 mm lenses with a 1.4 and a 2.0 teleconverters was an amazing combination for the polar bears. It's amazing how good the photos turned out, considering the distance. The shots that we were taking were probably taken at uh, something close to 300 yards or 300 meters. There's something about seeing the polar bears in the landscape. Now I see six muskox 
there, two muskets there, but we are in a big group, so we will not go closer, but hopefully they will come to us. It was a great experience to uh, photograph the, the muskox. Yeah. We were a little bit like goats. It's kind of a mission impossible to, to take a group of 40 photographers and uh, try to approach uh, the muskox without disturbing them. Uh, but we, the guys did a great job. Yeah. They, the guides did. I thought th this was impossible. Yeah. There are, I got a few shots because um, I was uh, most of the time with a leading guide mm -hmm. who was walking fast and uh, I was well, basically just lucky since um, I was lucky the muskox was not lucky because uh, we were walking up a, a ridge and okay. uh, when I got the best shot it was um, a little bit ridge and uh, and uh, Suddenly, well, three, we have three adults were, were there looking into the lens. Greenland landscape uh, has really captured me. Uh, it's the feeling of being in a uncharted landscape of sorts. Of course, people have been where we, where we are going, but where we are, when we are there, we are the only ones there. And it feels very wild. It feels almost untouched and just walking on the tundra experiencing the uh, especially the the autumn colors as we have now the smell of the tundra the quietness stillness it's just a very special experience being in that kind of landscape usually a little bit strange. I was in an art seat, as we call it. <laughs> I think that's my best no picture. No offense <laughs> to you artists. Uh, Gira calls everything that's abstract or uh, uh, you need, uh, you don't understand the photo. She calls that art seat. I'm looking forward to see that in a big screen when I come home. I took so a lot of pictures. It's, it's like a painting, it's, mm -hmm. it's blue and white and the other one is orange and like a gold. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all kinds of patterns. That, I took that from the zodiacs when the sun was hitting the sea. Yeah, the, the glare, yeah. yeah. It's amazing. So you it's, have an eye for abstracts.
For a few nights we had a clear sky. Shooting northern lights from a moving ship can be tricky, but in general shooting northern lights is tricky. Sometimes the captain stopped the ship and uh, all lights were turned off. Still the ship is always moving and uh, the icebergs they are also moving. Getting a sharp shot was therefore a little bit difficult. I used the 1424 2.8 lens for all the shots and uh, all the time on f2.8. Going close to a one second exposure and uh, 10,000 ISO, even 12, was needed most of the time. In some shots the red, purple and orange colors were vivid and uh, very visible. Usually I find the magic behind a good northern lights photography to be the foreground. Northern lights are often similar, but it's the foreground and the subject that give the photo some value. Icebergs or a reflection in the distance can help. One of the guides on the ship Jonas Bayer, a fantastic photographer by the way, he was selling waterproof Ortley bags. We bought a pair and used it all the time on the ship. Even though we didn't get a proper insert like from F-Stop or Love Pro, the bags proved to be really great and uh, at least I, I will use mine as a main photo bag in Iceland. The camera bodies we took on the expedition are the Nikon Z7 Mark II and for video the Z6. For lenses it was a Nikon Z14 24 2.8 and the Nikon Z24 120 f4. We also had the 400mm 4.5 lens with the 1.4 and 2.0 teleconverters. Since weight and luggage was no problem on this ship. We also took the F mount 300mm f2.8 and 70-200 f2.8 lenses. A DJI Mavic 3 and a Mini 3 Pro drones were also part of the gear. There are three ways to photograph on an expedition like this. From the ship, from Zodiacs and from land. When doing landings, it's possible to use tripods, filters and all the usual methods we are used to do for uh, landscape photography. We used 6-stop filters for some of our landscape shots. Mostly we were using a 6-stop magnetic filter for the 1424 lens. And uh, as for the 24-120 lens, we were using our old uh, screw-on filters, 6-stop and uh, sometimes only sometimes a circular polarizer, if we used filters. Looking back on this uh, expedition to Greenland, it's not only the photos and the amazing country that stands out, it's the people we met. There was never a dull moment aboard the ship. We made new friends and uh, met like-minded people and getting to know people and have a glimpse into their lives is a fantastic experience. This video is not sponsored, but I remind you about our ebook, Photographing Iceland, a photo guide to 100 locations in Iceland. You can find that on our website ggart.is. Thank you for watching.